Welcome everybody to tonight's home clinic. A home clinic is where we grab one quality coach and he presents on one specific subject for you guys to enjoy and he usually does that from home. If you guys have been enjoying this series and would like to see it continue, uh, we wanna ask that you would like and subscribe below. Those things certainly help us to grow and is kind of that feedback to say this is, yeah, this is a good thing, keep this coming. If you have a desire to present in the future, reach out to us on Twitter, DM us, that's at Chief at the Chief Pigskin. All right, without further ado, tonight's home clinic. Welcome everybody, Nate Albaugh here, assistant football coach at Unity High School in Tolono, Illinois, and excited for another home clinic because this one with a guy that I got to meet a couple years ago, Ivan Rangel, who is an El Paso, Texas guy. I went down to El Paso some years ago, two, maybe even three, I can't remember. Um, and we shot a clinic uh, with El Paso football coaches entirely in Spanish. I had been dying to um, kind of just like keep pushing the envelope with Chief Fix and I want to do something in Spanish. And we had like five or six American coaches that could all speak Spanish and Ivan being one of them. Um, and, and at the time you spoke on 3-3 and a lot of defensive back play. Um, so now you've since moved on, Coach Rangel, and a lot of, he said a lot of guys call him Wrangler. He's moved on. He's now the D.C. at Hanks High School. And uh, was last season the first season as the D.C., or was it the second? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, last season was the first season uh, as a defensive coordinator. This year we're going into my second year. Well, so what was one thing maybe as a D.C. that you probably – you know – I got to believe you'd been kind of waiting for an opportunity for a while. So what was something maybe it's like, I got my opportunity. Ooh, this one, this caught me a little bit by surprise, or this was maybe a little more difficult than I expected. You know, it, it's one of those things where you have to realize, you know, offense plays ball too. And so, you know, it doesn't matter how prepared you are. They're going to throw some wrinkles in there and, and make it tough on you, you know, to, uh, tough on, on the defense and, and just trying to, to understand everything, you know, I've got to think a little bit more big picture, uh, not just so much position oriented. I got to think big picture and, and think of what protections are giving me, you know, are they running field? Are they running boundary? Are they running strong? Are they running weak? And it's a lot to process. And I think last year was good uh, uh, as far as the learning. Now it's time to, uh, to, to seal my stamp uh, on, on this, on this defense and, uh, uh, take us to to new levels, you know. Take us to new uh, to to places we haven't been before. Well, you're talking today on uh, being multiple uh, from a three three to high shell, right? Being able to show yes, a lot of looks. Um, I've kind of I've always said that I've continued. It's like year after year, I continue to show less and less looks. Like I keep going to one look, one front, and my biggest worry, and you can help put this to rest, has always been. As I teach more fronts, as I teach more looks, how do I teach them in such a way so that the kids can still play them fast? Because I, what I found was I felt like I was making more mistakes when I was more multiple, and that was right. leading to big plays. So how do you balance that for yourself and your own um, ball team? So, so for us, it's the way we teach it, the pedagogy that goes behind it, right? So in our stack look, you know, our, our outside backers are always going to be B-gap players unless the DNs are in that B gap, right? If they see that, that there's a body in front of them, they know, all right, now I'm a C gap player. And now I can trigger a little bit quicker on the outside. And I don't have to worry about that B gap. Now. You know, uh, it's, it's how we teach it. I don't, I don't like to say that we teach a million different coverages or a million different, you know, stunts or whatever. Uh, I'd like to think we teach technique and that's, that's probably the best way to, to put it. You know, if, if, if we could teach a technique, the coverage behind it should be similar. Uh, try to relate everything in families, try to teach them one blitz path. And when we, you know, call it something different because we're bringing another guy added to that pressure, hey, this is still your blitz path. All this means is you're still going here or you've got a body in front of you. You've got a, you're, now you're playing with C gap responsibility. So it's, it's about the teaching process. It's the pedagogy part of it. I think we have really good teachers on our staff that take advantage of, of their, their abilities to relate to those kids, to disseminate information as, as best as they can. And I think that's what, what allows us to be very multiple. 
Well, I'm a, I've been a 3-3 guy for a long time. I currently mm -hmm. coach in a 4-4 system. Um, I, I'm excited to hear from you. So I'm excited to hear about the being multiple and how you teach it because I think that I, it's, it's an easy out for me to say, no, I'm not going to do more. I don't want to make mistakes. It's an easy out for me. So I need to hear from coaches like you that are doing a lot and, and learn from you. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to you, coach. Share your, strain, your screen and take it away. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Again, uh, my name is Ivan Renhal. Uh, a lot of coaches here uh, in El Paso call me Coach Wrangler. Um, I'm the defensive coordinator at Hanks High School in El Paso, Texas. Uh, there's my contact information if you guys want to uh, reach me. Uh, easiest way to get a hold of me is through Twitter, at Wrangler, R-A-N-G-E-L-E-R -E -E underscore Ivan. Um, or you can shoot me an email. I ran hell one at yisd.net. Uh, so in our three, three, we do base out of a two shell. Uh, it's important for us to base out of a two shell, uh, but we still do everything the same way we would if we were in, in a one high look, uh, as far as uh, the teaching aspect of it goes, right? And I'll get into that uh, in a second. Uh, it's important for me and my staff, one of the big things that, that we focused on was how do we create you know, situations that, that are beneficial for us. Uh, and so we kind of took on that, that motto, hey, let's create a nightmare, we're the Hanks Knights. So we kind of associated Knights and nightmare together. We wanted to create uh, an identity. We, you know, one of the things we, we did was labeled ourselves, branded ourselves as the nightmare defense, kind of, uh, you know, encompassing what we want to do and, and the kind of kids that we have. So it, for us, it's an identity. Uh, it, it's what we rally around. Uh, we rally around this concept, and, and I think it makes us uh, better in the long run. All right, so <clears throat> a little bit about uh, Hanks Knights football. We are a Division II 5A. We've got about 1,600 kids. Um, I am heading into my 11th season coaching football. This is going to be my second year as a defensive coordinator. Um, last year, we finished 7-5. and five. Uh, We were able to get into the playoffs. We won our bi-district title. Uh, against a very tough Austin High School team, uh, also here in El Paso. Uh, they ran slot T and, and, you know, we had a good beat on them. And then, you know, we, we were able to do, uh, we were able to hold our best defensive performance for that game. Uh, our first title in 24 years, uh, that seven and five could have easily, easily been uh, nine and three, you know, some, some missteps um, in, in some key district games uh, hurt us there. Uh, at the very last second, you know, dropping games at, uh, on, on final snaps is, is always tough. Uh, but those are learning teachable moments for sure. Uh, it allowed us to grow. It allowed us to, to tweak, uh, to fix those weaknesses that, that we had. And, you know, I think that's what, what, what led us to be successful in the playoffs. Um, prior to being at Hanks, I spent nine years uh, at Del Valle High School. For those of you guys that don't know, Del Valle High School in El Paso uh, is one of the powerhouse programs in the city. Uh, spent nine years there uh, as uh, number one as a corners coach, and then number two as a, as a safeties coach. Uh, we we separated them, and we were able to uh, you know create this defense that people feared, that people did not like going up against. We were good against the run. We were good against the pass. Uh, it led us to four district uh, titles, six by district titles, and then one area title. Uh, in that time, I was, you know, just honored to work for our head coach, uh, who's now the head coach at Naaman Forest in Garland, Texas, Coach Jesse Perales. Um, he taught me uh, a lot about football. He's my mentor. You know, I still go to him whenever I have issues, whenever I still, whenever I have problems. He's, he's just that, that role model, you know, of how to run a program and how to be, you know, just very detailed in what we do. And I got to spend some time under uh, our DC at Del Valle, who's still currently at Del Valle, Coach Kevin Butler. And he's the one that taught me the foundations and the principles of this defense and how to get it going and how to make it, uh, make it right. So, you know, when, when I came to Hanks, it was important for me to, to bring those aspects, you know, to this defense that I want to create and construct. But it was also important for me to blaze my own trail, to leave my mark on what I wanted to do. And that's why, you know, going through film and, and, and looking at certain things, we wanted to um, put our stamp on it. You know, what, what do I like? I'm a secondary guy, so I think from top down. 
And that's why a two shot for me is very important. Okay, so this is our, 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 our base defense. At, oops, this is our base defense at Del Valle. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Right, we're, we're even on both sides. We're balanced on both sides. We're built up the middle. Uh, for us, our structure up front, we're playing fives with our defensive ends. They're C-gap spill players. Our nose is an A-gap player. Our mic is an A-gap player, right? Our, our outside backers, we, uh, we just label them backers at Del Valle. Uh, we're B-gap players in the run fit. And if we sent them on, on a blitz path to the outside, you know, they were C-gap spill players now. So when we were installing this defense uh, at Del Valle, it was important for us to build up the middle. Our nose had to be, you know, maybe not the biggest guy, but had to make an impact. Our mic, uh, our middle backer had to, make, had to be one of our best athletes, and our free safety had to be one of our best athletes because he had to be able to run the alley, right? Run the alley whenever we spill something to the force, he can go there and clean it up. Um, our overhangs were usually lined up inside shade. We pressed them up a lot on that number two because we wanted to make sure we got contact on them, right? Um, we were built with spot drop principles. Uh, later on, uh, as, as we uh, kept in the system, we, we started zone matching a little bit more. Uh, it was tough for us because this is where we gave up seam routes. This is where we gave up, uh, you know, just you know, those, those uh, snag routes right behind our, our, our overhangs, what we used to call the spur and the whip. Uh, for us, that was, that was big. We, you know, we were spot drop team, like I said, uh, and we would carry, you know, uh, a seam only if we made a call on it. Uh, everything else today, we're going curl flat, we're going curl flat, we're going curl flat. So, you know, for us, it was, it was working because, you know, in, in El Paso, a lot of teams run. So we were able to get eight hats in the box and, and, and make everybody uh, fit as best as they could. Uh, but on the back end, when we went to playoffs, we always struggled with teams who were just more dynamic uh, than we were. Uh, at Hanks, this is still a day one install. You know, we still teach our free safety aid. We're going to flat foot read. And we, we teach it just the way it is right here. We teach it up the middle because we want to show them the foundation. We always start with the foundation, and then we get to why do we want to base out of a two shell? That's important for us. Um, it's it's important for us to understand where the weaknesses of this defense lies. You know, if we're running cover three, uh, like we like we show like we're showing here, it's important to understand that you know seams are weak. You know, we're we're weak against the seams. Seams are our our, our weak point in this defense, and that's where our holes are going to be. Uh, we wanted to be able to make sure we teach the why, so that our kids when they ask you know, understand the why and why it's structured this way. Uh, and it's important for us to, to get that vertically aligned, you know, at, at the varsity level, JV level, freshman level, down to the middle schools, okay? So here we have a clip. <clears throat> this is how we used to structure and, and how we ran it at Del Valle. This is from 2018, right? We're uh, empty. We see reload here with the uh, back on the field side. Right, he's reloading. Now we had a good beat on the on this. We knew that every time that back, you know, uh, motioned uh, back to his, his his primary spot, we were going to get run. And so our, our free safety, who's taught to read flat foot, right, is a missile getting down in the box. So essentially, we're left with an invert, right? We're invert cover three. We've got our two corners, you know, uh, still playing third principles. But now we're able to get eight hats in the fit. <clears throat> and this is what defined us. We were physical. We were violent. We were aggressive uh, playing this, uh, this style of defense. Um, we didn't have an empty check, though. There was no empty check for us in, in, in this defense. We stayed base. We stayed base. Uh, and we, you know, played it no matter what. If it was empty, we stayed one high. If they, if they reloaded, uh, or motion back to quads, we stayed one high. We had no check for that. In essence, we were wasting, all right, we were wasting this uh, weak side player here because we didn't have anything for it. So when, when we see this play kind of, you know, just unfold, uh, we're able to, to pursue to the ball, and that was our identity. We're able to rally to the ball, and that's what we did. Uh, we're, because we're a one-gap team, or we, we were a one-gap team, you know, we were able to just, 
you know, punish people in the run game. And, and, and that's what, that's what attracted me. That's what, what, what I still believe in. I think we still have to stop the run. Um, the only difference is we do it out of a two shell. Here, here is a clip, same game. You know, now we get two by two. And this is where I felt the issues kind of popped up for us right. because we were a spot drop team. Uh, we're two by two doubles. We're, we're going to uh, sh- send one of our best uh, pressures, our best five man pressures. We're going to send linebackers from the outside. So we're going to send C gap pressure from our linebacker there. We're going to send C gap pressure from our linebacker here. And this is one of the clips where I felt that exposed us a little bit uh, as far as our coverage, our, our scheme is concerned, right? We're so busy. We're so busy trying to, with our overhangs, the most important guys who I feel on our, on our defense because we've got to reroute that dangerous number two. We're playing these guys inside shade. That's an issue for me. We're playing these guys visioning quarterback, and we're playing these guys trying to get hands on number two while still trying to get their eyes inside. If you guys if you notice, our eyes are right here. They're locked on that quarterback. And if we were playing outside shade, then we'd probably be a little bit better. But because of how we played it, you know, it, it, it presented problems for us. And I felt that we needed to adjust. So we're trying to do all of these things at once, all while trying to get hands on number two and then, you know, take care of our spot drop. And we end up with these holes right here. You know, we end up with a hole here. And we end up, because he misses up top, we end up with this uh, route over the top, you know, in that little hole. Now we teach our safety, our free safety, he's gonna leverage that strong side. He's gonna leverage the wide side of the field. We give these holes, this is the issues that, that, that I felt were, were big for us. And I needed to find a way to defend these, is, these issues top down in a two shot. And a lot of the time we also became predictable, uh, especially in the playoffs. Um, we depended on our overhangs way too much. Uh, and instead of taking a top-down approach, we kind of, you know, played this style. This is what we do. You know, got to got to stick with it. And and I felt that that you know at some point we need to adapt with what certain people are doing. Um, luckily, here our our pass rush disrupts the quarterback, right? So he's not able to get one of those quick little glance throws. Uh, he throws it over the top, incomplete. We're able to come back. Uh, and play another down, you know, and that, that's that's why our, our three three was so successful because we were able to generate pressure. You know, we were we were very very uh, pinpoint when it came to uh, sending it. We didn't like to send too much, you know, but when we did, we were hoping it, it, it's going to hit home or it's going to generate you know some sort of pressure where that quarterback has to flush. Okay, so when I came to Hanks, you know, I brought my concepts with me and I wanted to build a multiple defense. Uh, I wanted to make sure I got away from a static front. I didn't want to just stay in fives. I I wanted to make make sure that our D-line were able to move. You know, one of my best friends uh, in in coaching is the old line coach at Del Valle. And so he was telling me, he's like, hey, when you you build your defense, make sure that you you guys create just a nightmare for those old line guys. It's tough for them to to understand, uh, to kind of, you know, bend their rules. They're, they're, they've got their rules. That's what they stick to. You know, it's, it's up to us as a defense to, to break those rules. And we wanted to present different situations where we could. We wanted to build a versatile, uh, versatile defense. We wanted to make sure that we were adaptable uh, to any situation. We, we had that adapt or die mentality. A couple of years ago, I went to a coaching school. I heard Kirby Smart uh, present. And, you know, he, he, he talked about he had to adapt his, his base structure from Alabama to Georgia because of what teams were doing. You know, teams weren't running pro-style offenses anymore, so he had to adapt. And he, he came up, uh, you know, he, he presented a quote that, that really resonated with me. Uh, it's an Albert Einstein quote. It's uh, uh, the measure of intelligence is the ability to change. You know, and staying static is, is one of those things that, that gets us uh, beat. Staying static is one of those things that, that makes us predictable. So... We want to change a lot of looks. We want to be versatile. We want to bring uh, linebackers down, create four-man fronts, create five-man fronts, create six-man fronts. We just want to show as many looks as possible, all built around similar techniques. Uh, out of our two-shell, 
Um, we do base out of uh, cover three, but we run some, some two and some, some quarters. Uh, we wanted to keep that plus one in the box for sure. We, we like that six, six man box. If, if we tighten up our, our overhang, which we call a night, uh, it gives a seven in the box. If we bring down our weak side overhang, which we call a king, it gives us uh, eight in the box. So we still have that, you know, that plus one mentality. If you wanted to keep our weak side safety uh, back in coverage, now we're still plus one coverage on both sides because we can walk out our will. Uh, we are based in one gap principles that leaves us fast, uh, allowing to play fast, allowing to play smart, to be aggressive. Uh, but the biggest thing for us was we wanted to paint one picture pre-snap uh, and then present an entirely new one post-snap. We want to make you, we want to keep you guessing. If you're the OC, all right, this is what they show. You never know what we're in. If you're a quarterback, a 16, 17, 18-year-old quarterback, you know, you're going to see too high the whole time. And now, you know, what's going to happen when, when, when our, our safety spins down, uh, our weak side safety spins down and our, our free safety becomes the post player. You know, we want to just present different, different looks. Uh, we bring four-man pressure. We bring five-man pressure. Uh, we're looking to bring six-man pressure with a lot of movement on the back end uh, because in, in our district, you know, everybody here is spread. Um, uh, everybody's two by two, three by one. And so, and every, well, there's a lot of teams that are tempo. So it's important for us uh, to be able to, to you know, pre present and show different looks. You know, necessity is the mother of invention. And this is why we chose uh, to base out of it. Some information about our scheme. Now, because of some of the teams we played uh, during uh, the season, we were in our 3-3, you know, 46% of the time we played uh, slot T teams. We played, you know, just big power teams. So we had to bring in some of our bigger guys, some of our heavier guys. We don't have a lot, but we do have some. And we had to adjust our personnel to what they were doing. Um, so we were in our base personnel, our 3-3. 46% uh, of the time we sent pressure, you know, about half the time, 44%. We're looking to send a four-man. We want to still stay sound on the back end. 90% um, we're sending four men, and that, that's just, you know, it could be any one of the 11, right? It could be uh, uh, one of our, our strong side backer. It could be our weak side backer. It could be our mic backer. Sometimes we'll even send the free. We'll send that, that our, our king, our weak side safety, you know, off the edge on the weak side, or we'll, or we'll bring them down to that B gap if we feel we have a matchup. Uh, we'll bring our overhang on the strong side of uh, the spur or, or our night. We'll bring a corner also, you know. So we have the ability to bring all of that. You know, our five-man pressures are all built together as well. That We've got double dog gap plug pressures or we've got cross dog pressures. We have pressures where we bring our safety and a linebacker. Uh, and I've got some clips of that. Uh, we haven't brought six-man pressure yet. Uh, we're actually... You know, we've done some, some film study and, and we're looking into hot coverage or ice coverage to, to kind of throw that in there if we want to play 3D 2 under. Um, you know, we, we don't, we don't want to live in a cover zero world. Uh, but So this, this gives us a good little change up. You know, coverage wise, we're a major in cover three. We're a cover three team. Uh, we spin down with uh, Ripley's match principles embedded there. Um, you know, we're, we're a cover two team also. We minor in cover two. I'd like for us to be a little bit more uh, equal when it comes to cover two, cover four, and cover six. Uh, cover six being uh, our quarter, quarter halves concepts. Uh, and just because it gives us, you know, different, different looks on the back end. Uh, I think cover two and cover, cover four work well together. Um, you know, teams might think we're, we're in two, so they'll try to, you know, try to get a whole shot. But we're in, we're in quarters and we're able to make a play uh, on, on something we see. You know, um, so we'll start here, right? This is our base look. We're in five zero five. Our Sam, our Will, and our Mike, uh, our Mike Backer, and we're all stacked up. Uh, we base uh, out of a cover three, like I said. We call this stack. Uh, for us, stack. This is our base look. We call it stack tech. Tech is our cover three call. Uh, all our all our our, our coverage calls are uh, families. So our cover three family, we call it tech, um, like Texas Tech. Uh, so for us. Uh, corners are playing mod uh, thirds. If number one takes us vertical and deep, we're manning up on them. Uh, if number two takes us uh, outside, right into that flat, we're matching it with our, our night, uh, our overhang. 
if number uh, number two works outside uh, on an out route, we're coming down and we're still matching it. We're matching these guys unless, okay? So for us, one of the things that that changes this is if number two works in, works inside, right? So because he gets, uh, uh, he, he gives us a drag look. So now I'm not looking to, to match him inside. Now he, he, we pass him off to one of our wall players or our low hole rat, which is our mic backer, right? So that low hole rat, sits in the low hole while that free safety works to the middle of the field, sits in the high hole, okay? We pass them off and we allow our guys to man match underneath in the box. What this uh, safety is looking for and what our, our king and our knight, what they're also looking for is something from a fast three, okay? Uh, if we see this, this movement here or, or this route concept here, we know that we're not gonna work to this number two anymore. Now we're gonna work down to that fast three and we're still good all across the board right that's important for us you know with these concepts we're bringing four-man pressure uh we like to bring you know pressure from all sides uh we like to bring our, our sam you know b gap it, it's 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 important for us that he understands how his path changes and what his responsibilities are when we bring him c gap uh we'll bring him we'll, we'll even bring him back into the a gap you know, and we'll do the same thing with our will. And for us, you know, we want to show so much that these linemen don't know what to check to. You know, we'll mug, we won't mug. We'll mug one side, we won't mug the other. We'll bring a safety down and then we'll, we'll kick him back up. Um, and it's, it's, it's just presenting different, different ideas, different thoughts going through that old lineman's head. Uh, one of our favorite pressures, you know, is, is something from the outside, either from the strong side overhang or from the weak side overhang. You know, we like that pressure because he's not accounted for. We're bringing it from the roof. And to us, that's important, right? Trying to create that nightmare that we talk about. We go six-man pressure. We'll play hot coverage behind it. Um, and we just want to build this uh, just, you know, so versatile that, that it can adapt to any situation, right? So we'll start with our fronts. This is the second front that we teach. Uh, it's a tight front. It's, it's a four eye, zero and a four eye. And, and what we do now is we're spilling by alignment, right? These spread offenses want to take advantage of this B gap right here. So what we've done in essence is we've already spilled, you know, just by alignment alone. Okay. We're getting a two for one. This guard and this tackle are going to end up doubling here uh, on this, on this end. And that allows us to play a little bit more uh, fast, uh, with our linebackers, especially, you know, if we get two by two, uh, in, in two by two, like what we see here, uh, our, our linebackers are able to widen out and they know that they're a cover down. They don't have to worry about their B gap anymore. They're outside of that tackle. Uh, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll show you guys in some of the clips. And now we're able to trigger, you know, quick on, on anything outside. If we see zone, we're able to get outside quick. Or if we read pass, we're already in, in, in windows, right? This gives us a three on two. And, you know, if we see trips, it'll give us a four on three or four over three. So we're able to show like if we're in quarters, right? But we're still playing cover three behind it. And it just gives us uh, just different advantages uh, to, to be more aggressive in certain situations. Here's another front that we teach. So now we've taught our, our 505, uh, we've taught our four eyes, and now we get the best of both worlds. This is what we call flex. For us, flex means we're gonna flex to the field side. So we're bringing that four eye, we're flexing them to, uh, 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 we're flexing them from a five to a four eye, right? This does present a little bit of an issue for us, right? We, we have a soft edge to the boundary now, but it allows us to be, uh, a little bit more versatile in the pressures and the games that we want to play up front. So now, because he's flexed into a four eye, for us, if this is the boundary, right, we could play games this way. So now I could play an end nose game. Uh, I could play, you know, the nose going first and the end behind it. While they're playing games there, I'm bringing weak side pressure for my will, or as I'm spinning down, I could bring weak side pressure from our king, 
okay? And this gives us uh, different looks. You know, it makes those old linemen think, um, this is what we want to do. These are the, uh, the, the situations we want to present teams. Uh, we want to make it tough for them to prepare against us. You know, if he's, uh, if he's reduced, is he always going to run a game? You know, not always. Sometimes we'll flare him back out, and then we'll bring that Will Backer right through that B-gap, you know. So it's just different presentation, and we're still running, you know, same similar principles behind it. Um, if we get into situations where, you know, we need to walk out our linebackers and we need to move them and, uh, to the weak side or move them over to the strong side, I got a good little nugget on another clinic. Uh, Coach Brandon Lichtenberg from, from Incarnate Word, you know, talks about what he calls boss and bows. So for us, boss means backer over strong side. So let's say I need to get more help on this side. Uh, our, our gaps are still covered, right, to, to the weak side. You know, if we want to boss it and, and get a little bit more, you know, three, four spacing, you know, we'll move, we'll call boss, and our linebackers move over to, to the strength side. If we feel, you know what, we need to walk out that linebacker on the weak side a little bit more, we call bows. So now we're working bows, backer over weak side. And that's one of the big adjustments that, that we saw that was, you know, critical uh, for us, you know, where to place the linebackers in spacing to give us, you know, to take away some of these uh, issues that we found with that soft edge. You know, and then similar to the weak side, uh, we're going to weak flex it over, uh, flexing that field five. We're going to bring them down to a four eye. We can, now we can run games and pressure uh, from the field. So again, we play our, our nose and exchange games there. Uh, we could bring game uh, and now we have an extra uh, rusher. You know, we, we can insert our, our Knight, we can insert our Sam. Uh, we could bring that Mike, you know, on, on, on a green dog, you know, and, and that, that all works into what we're trying to do. You know, we're, we're able to boss, we're able to bows. For us, that's one of the most important adjustments that we can make. We don't always have to adjust with our linebackers. Sometimes we adjust with our secondary. You know, there were certain instances where they rolled, uh, they motioned over and we had to roll our coverage. So because we're structured in a two shell, we can roll down. And everybody here is cross-trained. Our, our king knows what the free safety is doing. He knows what our knight is doing, right? Our knight knows what our free and our king are doing. So everybody here is trained the same. They know exactly what to do when teams try to switch up strength on us. And that to us presents a huge advantage because there's no way you're going to outflank us. You know, there's, there's, there, there shouldn't be a way uh, of how to up, up, upflank us. Uh, coverage wise, this is our base coverage. Uh, and this is our, like I said, our cover three, our tech call. We play Ripley's match principles behind it. Um, but we could show just a multitude of, of different things. You know, we wanted to build this from the top down. Um, we wanted to make sure that, that we're not teaching concepts that are just crazy. Everything kind of works itself in. So whenever we present a new coverage, hey, all it is is just like when we play, you know, our cloud technique. That's all it is. It's like, okay, cool. That makes sense, right? So the teaching aspect, when, when you see what we have here, you know, Ripley's match, our press bail, our three cloud, our robber call, our hot coverage, and our one high look, you know, all of this plays into it. Um, day one install, like I said, is one high. And this right here, our Ripley's match stuff, um, you know, this for us would be uh, rip, rip, rip. We're bringing down our, 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 our king to that weak side number two. He's going to match him, you know, in the seam, uh, in the curl, or in the flat. Uh, he's matching the whole way uh, unless he gives us something inside, right? And, and that, in that case, we call in, 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 in. And now one of our wall guys or a rat will be able to uh, make that play. Uh, for us, you know, giving the, these, these looks – uh, press bail, you know, for us, it's, it's important because now does the, does the quarterback think we're playing cover two press or does he think we're playing press bail quarters or are we, are we staying in three, you know, just same picture uh, as, as much as we can, but different, you know, just a, a different outcome in the end. Uh, we're able to play our three cloud uh, where we roll, we roll coverage to the strong side or we roll coverage to the weak side, depending on what we see. Uh, we're able to play robber coverage with this, uh, uh, King with this weak side safety. All we do is, if you want to switch up who that flat player is, um, 
we're able to, to give him a backer, backer call. We give this linebacker, backer, 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 backer. And he knows that he's going to be that uh, Ripley's match guy. Um, sometimes if we get trips, we're able to roll down our free safety to that trip. So now he'll play that curl uh, and everything just kind of works over. So now our mic becomes the wall. Our will is the curl flat. Our king becomes the post player. He comes down to that hook curl. And now we get this movement here. And now our Sam becomes, uh, becomes the rat. And so for us, it's cross-training everybody. Our, our linebackers, every single one of them knows what to do. You know, it doesn't matter if they're a Sam, a Mike, or a Will. Uh, we just label them like that. Uh, they're all cross-trained to do the same thing. Um, our safeties, again, they're all cross-trained to do the same thing. So that's what allows us to be multiple, that everybody's learning uh, at the same time. Right? Everybody's learning the same thing. Here's our cover two, uh, what we call horns. You know, one of the big things for us uh, – was we actually ran cover two to stop the run in certain instances. And that was huge because we were able to be, you know, very aggressive and press with our uh, corners. And the way we run cover two, we're playing the two read, uh, you know, two read across the board. And we're reading what's going to happen here. Is it going to go out? Is it going vertical? You know, we have the rule to go, I go. Uh, so that way we stay underneath in case he breaks on some sort of smash route, right? We're still underneath that corner and we could still come down and rally on that curl. Uh, we play two press. It, it fits into our uh, language system, into uh, our calls. So you know, everything is, uh, that, that we do is, is associated to our family. We could play two press. We could play two trap where we're trapping that number two. We'll give you a hard look uh, uh, on, on the number one. And then at the snap, boom, we're coming down on number two, trying to take away you know, that bubble or, or that. Uh, you know, quick little wide receiver stand up. Uh, we also have built in into our defense uh, cover two roll where we can roll to the field or to the boundary, right? Let's say, you know, and, and, and you, see, you guys have probably seen this, that overhang goes and that's, that free safety goes. So now we still want to play two. We'll work over the top. And now our corner plays that boundary half, just like you would in cover three. You know, it's cover three principles for him. And, and, and these are some of the things that, that we decided, you know, as a staff that we wanted to, to install because of the versatility, right? You know, OCs, you know, are, in this day are, you know, nobody's going to bring that free safety. And what do we do? We bring that free safety. Nobody's going to bring the free and the overhang. Boom. And we bring the free and the overhang, right? And so it's these kind of concepts that, that got us thinking, you know, how could we uh, change up and not be so static, but still keep everything that we want to do, you know, it's, it's about how we teach it. It's about um, when we install it, right? So everything is a progression. We scaffold everything. We kind of work on, 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 on how we install um, in, in, in a progression to make things a lot simpler for those kids. Here's our, our quarters call. It's just basic quarters. You know, if, if we want to run quarters, you know, it, it, we call it Gator. Uh, it's a four read. Uh, we're playing just mod quarters on the outside. Our, our free and, and our, our king are playing two to one. You know, our, our will is, is looking to match number two or wall two if he goes inside, right? But he's also looking to match three. And a lot of this still plays into what we're doing in cover three and cover two. You know, we teach it the same way so that, hey, just like what we did here, you know, it, it's, it's a lot, it, it makes it relate a lot easier for those kids. We could play press bell quarters, uh, or we could just play a play a, a straight up blanket prevent cover four. Um, either one of those are are are, are options for us. Right? And then you know the big change up for us, uh, as far as you know what we what we do is our quarter quarter halves concept, right? Our what we call Spartan for us, uh, our Spartan call um, because it starts with an S and a P. Uh, Spartan, right? We, we relate it to split field. So now we don't always have to go quarter, quarter halves. We can go, you know, if we see trips on one side, we can go uh, quarters to the field. And if we see a single receiver, now we can bracket, you know, now we can play bracket coverage on that single side receiver. Um, or, you know, we can check into one of our different uh, quarters, uh, trips adjustments. We can go to special, right? Or, or, or what we call special off also. You know, you got, uh, that, that's the big thing, you know, special stubby, mini lock, all that stuff. But for us, that's just another tool 
in the tool belt, uh, tool belt. And so the more versatile we are, the more dynamic we are, the more problems we cause, and the more situations that tend to favor us, uh, it tends to, um, to, to have, and now we're able to take advantage of those. We're able to uh, present, you know, just huge nightmares for offenses. So here we go. We'll start with the first clip here. We're in our regular stack, all right? We're in our regular stack. We're in our base front. Our mic, uh, our mic back is going to go uh, a gap pressure. Uh, we call it mic. Simple for him. He, he, he hears mic. He's going to go a gap, all right? <clears throat> the two by two formation. This is against Horizon High School, and so we see motion, but we're going to keep our principles the same, right? Our 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 king is going to match number two from the top down. Our free safety is already in the post. Our corner is looking for the new number one, vertical, right? And because we see motion, we know he's gonna drag across, all right? Our overhang plays this well. Our overhang, our, overhang, our knight plays this the way it should be, okay? Because he's gonna get a fast three here. He gets fast three, right? There's the fast three right here. And now he picks it up. Everything is working the way it should. Uh, you know, where, where we see an issue is our linebacker should have pushed out a little bit more and, and, and put hands on that number two. And our king safety uh, over the top opens up the wrong way. So those are small little issues that, that we'll see, especially for, 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 for this defense. We were, uh, this was the first year that they actually ran any type of zone. Uh, before I got here, they were primarily a, a, just a, a cover one team. And so trying to, reteach them technique, you know, was, was a little bit of an issue. Um, so here we see our knight works to that fast three, right? Here's our Sam also working over. We get, we get a good, good rush uh, from, from our mic and our D line, and we're able to get him to check down. And because I want to pride us on, on rallying to the ball and pursuit, we get good angles from all our guys you know, coming down and we're able to swarm on that uh, running back there. It, it's, it's important for us uh, to rally to the ball, to make sure, look, we're going to bend a little bit. We're going to give up some stuff underneath, but that's all we're going to give up. We're, we're trying not to give up the big play. And, and that was huge for us uh, with, as, as far as creating an identity. So from the tight film, here we see it, right? We see, our, 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 we see motion coming inside. We know we're going to get a new number one and a new number two. Uh, our, our overhang, our knight uh, is going to go uh, towards the fast three. He's going to push that fast three. And because we teach everything the same way, it makes this an easy read for him, right? He's able to get out to that check down. Quarterback throws it down. And like I said right now, we're rallying to the ball. We're pursuing to the ball. And we make a good TFL. And for us, that's what wins games, right? The more TFLs we can create, you know, the, the, the more behind the sticks the offenses get and the more they start to change, they get away from what they want to do. Right. Here we see uh, in a three by a three by one, they're in what we call bunch, bunch formation. Uh, that number two is the apex. Um, you know, these splits allow us to rotate the free safety down, uh, especially in three by one. Uh, what we're going to get is, is we're bringing a single dog from the weak side, what we call web. We're bringing them in that weak B-gap blitz. Um, our king on the backside is going to become the new post player. You know, we, this is one of our rip lists, so we're calling – for us, it'd be lasso. If we're rip Liz, if we're calling rip Liz, it'd just be Liz, right? But for in our terminology, we call it lasso, lasso. So he knows he's working down number three. Uh, number one, that allows us to, to play that curl uh, to, to the, the trip side. And number two, it allows us to gain an extra hat in the run fit. So for us, that's huge. That's a huge advantage that, that we have. Uh, our knight is going to play physical on that number two, on, on that number two, on that apex. He's going to get hands on there. He's going to uh, make sure that he doesn't get off the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, and, and our nose is going to make the play just because we're going to see zone here, and he's just going to shoot that gap. All right, so here we see it. Here we see it. We've made our list call, our lasso, lasso, lasso. There's the rotation. And our nose shoots through, makes the play. And again, that concept of pursuing, rallying to the ball, you know, is something that we're trying to ingrain in our kids. The more hats we have around the ball, 
the more successful the outcome is gonna be for us, all right? We see it from the tight view. There's our web call. We get zone, our nose penetrates through, makes the play, and we rally to the ball. Up to the trip side, our knight is able to uh, just, you know, just create that wall on that number two receiver. He's terribly outsized, you know, but he's still able to, to be physical enough and to work. Our free safety knows he's going to run the alley also in that rotation. And we've got that covered if that zone bounced outside. So for us, you know, being able to, to get into a, a rip list check uh, in, in three by one is huge because we gain that extra hat. That free safety knows where he's fitting anyways. You know, we're still good on the backside. Our king becomes the post. And we're able to play everything just like if we were in one high, pretty much. Um, here we see one of our favorite five-man pressures. This is what we call blade, backers to the outside. We're going to cut through that C-gap. Um, this is in our playoff game, in our area playoff game against Wichita Falls Rider. And one of the big plays uh, that, that we had during this game, uh, we were down 21-7 here. And, and, and this play, you know, because they weren't able to get anything positive, just kind of set them back. And we're able to climb back into the game and get to 21-14 uh, right after this series. And we started presenting a, a matchup problem for them because they didn't know what to do uh, in this five-man front because we stem late and we're able to cr uh, create different fronts. Um, if we don't call it, you know, kids know what to do. But we're also able to create this front, you know, if, if I give it a call. To the top, we're still playing uh, cover three. We're playing, we're gonna rotate down. Our free safety is uh, over that number two receiver. Right, is going to work back to the middle of the field uh, because we have a tight end. Our safety knows he's going to play robber principles, right? He's going to play robber principles. And our outside backers are going to go on a C-gap blitz path. So we've created a new front. We're, we're playing robber principles behind it, so something a little bit different for us, right, uh, that, that, that we've shown. And we're able to get a big tackle here from, from our outside backer, our, our defensive end, you know, comes through wrong arms that that puller on this power, uh, and we just we, we get a huge tackle, a huge stop on first down. You know, we keep them behind the sticks, we keep them second and long. You know, makes them more predictable, gives us a little boost of confidence, and we can play with these guys. You know, we're able to do what we do and still be successful with it. Um, for us, that was that was big. Uh, you know, it, it's able we're able to get our our, our king down into the box. You know, in case we see anything crossing, uh, able to rob that number two, you know, from the field or rob that number one from the boundary. So it gives us just different ways to play cover three. And that's something that, that we definitely wanted to do. Uh, our free safety, you know, he's, he's up top. He can hammer down uh, if it's a post, you know, if it ends up being some sort of play action, he's still hammering down on the post if it gets uh, to the middle of the field. And our knight feathers out. Uh, he's playing <clears throat> from an outside shade. Uh, he can get into, into the fit as well. Uh, here we see him. He's feathering, 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 right? A little bit of a scoot. Well, we, we also call it scooch technique. Uh, and now he can play over the top on that, on that slant. So for us, it's matching principles. It's presenting different fronts. You know, this five-man pressure for us, uh, I love. Uh, in our Galvaya system, we used to call it buck. Um, backers to the C-gap, we call it blade. And just keeping those uh, just similar characteristics, you know, make us, you know, a, a very tough defense, you know, and that's what we pride ourselves on. Can we see it from the tight view? That late stem, again, puts us in a five-man front. We're able to cut from the outside. Our, our B-gap players, our DNs, they're able to knife through, and we make a play make a huge play in, in, a, in a game, uh, the first area game that we had in 24 years. Here we see one of my favorite five-man pressures, or one of our cross dogs. Uh, it, we, we call it mix. Uh, we see this, it, this is a cluster formation. We call, our, our offense calls it cluster. It's this little, you know, tight stack twins look uh, to the boundary. And, and what we do here is we're overloading this side of the formation, right? We mug up our mic backer, and, and because we're cross-dogging, our mic backer knows he's gonna shoot that B gap, and this Sam backer is gonna go second, and he's gonna come inside 
on that a gap uh, a gap path right behind it we're still playing uh cover three we're playing a little bit uh more pressed because of of, of the alignment uh of from these receivers in that cluster set there uh, our our corner to the field you know is also playing a, a little bit more pressed uh at first and ten and you know we have them backed up we, want, we smell blood in the water this is one of our favorite concepts we're running cover three behind it our, our, our weak side safety is going to be a flat foot read player. He's just going to sit and wait. He's going to sit and wait for anything vertical. And this is one of the options that we have because we teach different techniques. He knows he could sit a little longer, stay down a little bit. He'll have inside help from that Will Backer, right? If anything crosses, and now, you know, we've presented a different look in cover three. Uh, here we see it unfold. Our, our mic occupies that guard. They're actually running power here. You know, we, we get inside of that, that power, that power uh, block, that G, and our Sam makes the play. You know, and, it, and it's, again, it's, it's being, you know, just different. Uh, for us, this, this five-man pressure to the field, because we could play it uh, out of uh, different coverages, you know, just keeps people guessing, you know, what are we doing it? Uh, what are we doing behind it now? Uh, our Simon sits as a fifth rusher and he's able to make the tackle, uh, beats the pull. And now they're second and 10, second and long, backed up, you know, in their own end zone. And, you know, we're able to, I, I, I believe we've created a safety uh, on the following play, but we smell blood in the water. We're going after it. We're, we're coming after you. You know, that's just one of the different ways that, that, that we uh, change eyes, you know, change, <clears throat> change looks. So here we go. This is our first uh, first look at, at what we do when we reduce our, our defensive end. Uh, our end to the boundary uh, is in a four eye. We're, we call that again. We're in a, in a flex call. We're going to bring pressure outside of it. So our D end is in a four eye. Our, pr our, our pressure is going to come from this will backer, but we're in cover three still. Now we, 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 give, we give the presentation that we're in quarters, right? We're three over two. We're three over two, right? Because he knows he's a cover down. He's, he's, he's got that, that quarterback thinking, all right, they're, gonna, they're, they're probably playing press quarters to the, to the boundary side, and we're playing just regular, uh, regular quarters to the field. Okay? So it gives us that, that, that illusion that we're playing cover four. Right? Um, we're three on two on both sides. Here we go. We're bringing the will off the edge, bringing that will off the edge, and now we spin into cover three. All right, we're going to spin into it. Our – our safety to the boundary, our king knows that if he reads run, he's coming down and he's got to get down because he's the force player. We get a good spill from, from that weak side backer who, who we sent on, on what we call a whack. Right? He, we get that spill and now we're able to, to clean it up with our, our king safety and our corner. Our corner uh, is quick trigger there because we're not playing, you know, seven yards off like we would in a regular cover three. We're playing uh, you know, about five yards and, and we shuffle technique with our corners so that they can get a better run, run read, uh, or run pass read. Okay. So that for us is important. Uh, just creating different illusions, right? Uh, that, that outside backer, and we'll take a look at it from the, from the tight view forces the spill. He's the spill player, you know, a little hesitation stutter step from that running back. And we're able to come down on it and make a play behind the sticks. So now it's third and long, and now we dictate to the offense what we're going to get. And that's something that we try doing all, uh, all year. Here's one of our, uh, another one of our favorite uh, uh, five-man pressures. We're going to bring our overhang, our, our night, and we're going to bring our weak side back, and we call this shark. So we're on an outside spill path, and we're on an outside spill path, right? So for us, this concept uh, was actually something we saw on film, and we, we liked it so much that, that we, we uh, installed it, you know, and, and it's all with, if we call it and we get it, we, we trigger right now, which you guys will see, um, especially when we see jet motion. When we see jet motion, we're going to get one of two things. We're going to get that jet sweep, right, especially here to the boundary, or we're going to get some sort of counter OT or power, right? Um, so for us, bringing it from both sides kind of, you know, uh, uh, suffocated that space 
and we were able to to make big plays. And here you see, because that counter can get to our, our night, we, we force a, an interception. We get, we get to the quarterback, ball pops up. Our linebacker, who's also on that blitz path, is able to make that interception. And now we're able to take it, you know, uh, hopefully take it to the house. Here we get tackled at the five-yard line. Um, we were upset that we couldn't score right there, you know, but, but it's just, you know, creating different matchups and we're still playing cover three principles behind it. So, you know, for us, everything stays the same on the back end, right? There's that trigger. We had called it. We called it. Uh, we call that play, you know, in the huddle. Well, if, if we see motion, we're, we're going now. You know, who cares if we show it? They still, we still got to, uh, they still got to get it, beat us there uh, with that, with that OT look, that GT look. Um, we're able to make a big play, and now we're trying to get, uh, get to the house, trying to put points on the board. You know, give our offense another opportunity in prime uh, area to, to, to score and take advantage of a mistake, a big miscue like that. Right, here we see a reduction on the field. Now this is our weak flex. Okay. Well, now, now we, we presented a different look coverage wise. So now we've kind of rolled over uh, a little bit. We're, we're still in cover three. This is a change up to our cover three. This is our three cloud look, right? Especially in trips, we like this. Uh, the apex, uh, apex is on, on, on the ball. So we're gonna get our knight to play physical right here, right? Our cover three, uh, our, 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 our storm call is what we call it because we're going to the strong side word association for us, right? It's very similar to what we would look like in base, even if we're running cover two, cover three, or, or, or quarters. Um, only difference is our, our safety, he's inside the hash, he's uh, in, inside that, that uh, center, right? And this is what it's gonna look like. We're gonna play cloud principles with that corner. We're gonna roll coverage. He's gonna get that third of the field now. Safety's gonna work to this hash. He's gonna look to poach number three. So number three, whether they cross any, anything from, from the number three is this safety's responsibility. And on, on the, uh, on, in this case, the boundary side, right? We're working cover three principles. We're gonna zone turn and we're gonna play our cover three technique. Uh, up front, we're playing a nose game. So our nose is gonna work to get to that B gap and our end is gonna shoot second and get to the A gap. He's gonna be the one that makes the play here. Uh, th this worked in our favor. Uh, you know, we kind of called it to where the back was here. Uh, we're going to get that G pull, like what we see here. We're going to get that, that guard pulled to the weak side, trying to uh, run weak side power on us. But because we called that game, our defensive end, who's looping around second, is able to make the play. He's able to make the play. And now we're second and long you know, behind the sticks. So that for us is important. Can we get a beat on the offense, present different matchup problems up front and present unique uh, matchup problems in the back end for us? And that's, uh, we're trying to bait that, quarter, uh, that, that quarterback and that offensive coordinator in the box, trying to bait him to think that we're in some sort of cover two adjustment. Here we are in the tight. <clears throat> Our defensive end is in that four eye. There we see the game comes inside is able to make the play, right? So just presenting these issues for us was, was a huge success. Uh, you know, for us, it, it was important to, to get uh, tackles for loss. We ended up with 78 of them during the year. Um, and it, it, it's just quick little matchups like what we saw there, right? Here we are in our tight front. So our D-line, we're in four eyes. Uh, our, our, our salmon, our will, our full cover downs. Uh, they're quick trigger C-gap players, you know, again, because we give this illusion of four over three, it looks like we're in quarters, all right? It looks like we're in press quarters to the field, but we're actually playing our cover three check the trips. Uh, one of them, this is our, our, again, our storm call. We're down. We're rolling two to one. He's looking to poach number three, and then he's going to work zone turn and get into his third, all right? We're playing a game to the boundary. We're playing an enter game to the boundary. Our end is gonna come up field first, and then our nose is gonna go second, all right? So here we see it. 
we bait that we bait that quarterback into throwing that that single side uh, receiver route that fade. You know, but because we're in, in zone technique, we're able to get in phase. Our, our hips are, are are turning right now. Uh, we shuffle step to get a good read. We shuffle step, and our our corner is able to make a big interception for us. Um, these are small little details uh, that that we're able to to implement for us. You know, in our in our EDDs and our everyday drills. You know, we work on this turn all the time, and it's important for them to see it on film. It's important for these kids to see what they do in practice has to show up on film, and that's one of those things that shows up for us. Uh, we, uh, I coach the corners, and so we're working hard, trying to make everything look similar, working hard on that press. There's an inside pass rush from our, our, our four eyes, but because of how we teach our corners, right, our zone turn is, is very simple. Uh, we're able to stay in phase and make a big play on it. Now we're getting into cover two. So we've shown what, what cover three looks like for us when we spin down, when we rip Liz uh, to the trip side. Uh, here's, we, we, see, we saw uh, our adjustment in, in trips, which is our, our, our storm call, our three cloud look. You know, our, our cover two is very similar to everything that we've done, except for our two safeties, obviously. So it's not so much teaching a new coverage, it's just teaching new technique for our corners. So we play our cover two like a two read, we're off here. This is our, our, our by-district playoff game against Austin High School. Um, what, one of our favorite pressures uh, to run with our cover two is bringing that strong side overhang, our knight, uh, on that C-gap blitz path. You know, he's able to take advantage here. Uh, we, we get that run call. We call it at the right time. Uh, able to make that tackle. Second and long. You know, next play that we're going to get is third and long, and, and we've just made this running team because they were about 90% run become, you know, dependent on something that they don't do, which is pass. And that's what we pride ourselves on, right? On, on, on stopping anything over the top with, with different looks and, and rallying to anything underneath. Um, for us, this, the presentation stays the same, but it, it's, it's what comes after. Our two read end up, ends up turning into quarters. So it's a simple teach. When we, when we install cover four for us, uh, it's, it's super simple. It's not even difficult. It's just changing a word for us. And, and there we see our outside C-gap pressure uh, hitting home. See it, our DN to the, to the boundary comes inside and there's our, our sort of call right there. Our, our knight taking advantage of that, uh, of that run back to the boundary. So here we see now we're playing, uh, we're sending a, a single dog mic, the same team, but now we're playing against the pass here, all right? We're going to send the mic uh, A-gap pressure with two read behind it. Like I said, it turns into quarters for us. Our king is going to, or our king should hammer down uh, on the Y, uh, but our, our outside linebacker, uh, our will, should also get hands on this, uh, on, on, on the back here, and we don't, and we leave a big gap, but... Uh, one of the biggest things here we use this we were using this as teach tape is we have to hit home our pressures have to hit home it does here uh, and we have to be sound on the back end because if this ends up popping if this ends up popping it changes the the the, the outcome of the game right there we see that y cross over the middle and we see it late we react late with our sam backer right he should have gotten hands on him our will uh because his eyes are on the quarterback should have put hands on this uh, back out to the flat. You know, could have been different, but because we, we, we uh, brought pressure there, our mic is able to make the, the play here, our mic and our DNs, uh, and we're able to, you know, just force something that they don't want to do. They didn't want to pass the ball. You know, they didn't want to throw the ball. They're a run team, and these guys are awesome at what they do. They stick to it, and to force them into different situations, is, is a benefit for us. Okay. Here we see it from the tight. There's that mic pressure. That's the cut on that, on that waggle, right? And we're able to just swarm him. We're able to swarm that quarterback. And, you know, we know that they don't want to throw the ball again. So we've created this problem this matchup problem up front. And this is running just off our stack. For a slot T team, uh, 
that we had to adjust for early on in the game. But later on in the game, to, to end the game, we just got into our stack and played ball. And we held them to, to no yards uh, uh, throwing or running because of the matchup problems we create for that slot T. Right? Here we are, two by two uh, doubles. We're going to bring what we call blast, which is our sandbacker to the B gap and our mic backer to the strong A gap. We're going to get four on one side. Right? We're going to bring them there. We call this blast. Um, we're able to manipulate quarterback's eyes. Uh, we're playing three over two. Right? We're playing three over two to the field. We're still in cover two. We're going to work. You know, it looks like quarters. We're able to, to get to that, uh, our corner to that new number one. Our corner is going to hammer down on this number two. Our safety is going to work underneath. You know, here we are, our, our will backer is going to work in this window underneath that number two receiver or, or the new number two receiver, and our safety can hammer down. So everything that we teach is, is very similar to concepts before. Like I said, we're not teaching new coverages, we're teaching techniques. And that for us has just made it a lot easier to be able to, to you know, get our, our, our vision across of, of what we want to do uh, up front. You know, we get the matchup we want with our Sam on that running back. He whiffs, and we're able to make a big play uh, in a big uh, situation in the game. It's, it's late in the game. Uh, I believe this is uh, towards the end of the third quarter. We're able to get a sack, and we start the series off on, 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 on a big note. We start off with a sack, right, with a TFL. Where we see it, we get that matchup. On the back end, we're still sound. You know, uh, we're, we're, we're three over two on both sides. And up front, we're able to bring pressure and hit home, you know, with, with our blast call. And this is where it starts to get tricky for teams when, 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 when they play us, right? So here we are, we're in cover two. We're, we're looking to roll coverage again, right? So this is very similar to our storm call. But in cover two, we call it kick. Our kick call tells this corner, that he's not going to play cover three rules anymore. He's not going to open up in zone turn. He's not going to open up and take the third. He's going to take this receiver man to man, right? He's going to take him uh, man to man. He's going to play man to man principles. He goes inside. I go underneath with him. Uh, he works outside. I'm going to man turn with it, all right? To the field, we're going to play our, 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 our cloud look. He's going to be aggressive, just like what we showed in, in cover two, uh, excuse me, in our, in our uh, uh, cover three adjustment which is storm he's going to play aggressive and he's going to trigger on anything underneath just like he would in our storm call so same presentation new picture post snap right we're still playing aggressive on that apex we miss there and that's fine we get the bubble there's our sam triggering down and here's our corner triggering on that underneath bubble route okay and this is the kind of these are the kind of situations that we want to take advantage of you know, are, are, we, are we in three, are we in two, are we in four? We're in two here. You know, we know our rules, especially if we're pressed. If we're pressed, we know we're triggering now, right? And, and that's important for us to be able to, to present uh, just different looks and, and take advantage of something like this. He knows he's playing hard and aggressive. Hey, play hard and aggressive. You know, jump that bubble, jump it. Because we have a change up for it, you know. When teams start to, to, to bait us with that bubble, now we have an adjustment for that as well. And again, it's all about technique. It's all about technique. So we've got storm, which looks similar to kick. Kick, which looks similar to storm. You know, what are we in? That's the issue. Are we playing man to the single side or are we playing zone to the single side? And those are the things that we wanted to build uh, when, we, when we met last year and installed our defense. You know, these are the issues we want to create. And there we are. Just a hard cover two corner. That's all it is for us in our kick call. Here we are, we're gonna, we'll take a look at, at, at the principles here, right? So this is the difference between storm and kick is this corner here. We're playing uh, roll coverage, right? We're still poaching number three, we're getting over two to one. But the big key is the difference in how we play and the technique that we play when we go storm or when we go kick and to the single receiver side. We're gonna, we're gonna be man, we're man to man, we're gonna man turn, we're gonna do everything we can uh, to try and, and, and hopefully get hands on the receiver. 
and now we're in phase, right? And this is just, just the technique that we're teaching, right? So they know kick. Yes, it sounds like it's a different coverage uh, in, in, in the big scheme of things, but for us, it's a technique. And that's what allows us to be versatile and be multiple with what we do on the back end. All right, one more time. We're playing man technique. Now this kid, about six, seven, six, eight, he's a, a, a big, big time recruit in basketball. And, and we were, you know, we have what we have in El Paso. We have five, seven guys, five, six guys. And that's what it is. But we're able to get in phase. We're able to hand fight a little bit, you know, and, and, and still stay on top of that route uh, as best as we can, as best as we can. That's the difference between storm and kick is a technique that we play uh, on that backside. Here it is from the tight view. We're going to send a sword call. We're not going to hit home with it. Uh, from the top, we're going to send our, our, our knight, right? Our, that back is there to pick us up. So we, we're not going to hit home all the time, but we're going to get, we're going to try to force something like this here, a, a bad throw like what we do uh, here. Okay, that, that presents third and long. And now I believe we, we forced them to punt, and, and it, we, were, we were close 21-20, 21-21 at that point in the game. Um, here we are against Horizon. Now, this is one of the biggest things, one of the most underutilized pressures, I think, that we see in, 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 in football. It's that boundary corner blitz. We call it chop, right? We're still going to play cover two behind it. Uh, we could roll into a, a weak side cover three um, if we choose to. We're playing cover two behind this one. But it gives us another element, who's coming, uh, where, where is this pressure coming from? There you see that corner. He starts off in a press technique, right? Look, gives it that look like, hey, we're playing press. We're going to play physical. And then we end up bringing him outside on that pressure. He misses the tackle because he takes a wide path, but he affects the play. He should have made that tackle. Um, and, and for us, this was a huge hitter for us. We, we ran this against uh, Canoteo in one of our district games, and we forced a fumble when we thought we, you know, we were like, man, these guys are going to run the ball. Um, we were able to force a fumble, quarterback booted, you know, we're able to, to, to capitalize on that. And again, this is one of the, I, I think, one of the most underutilized pressures. I think people are scared. You know, we're scared of it too. But at some point, we got to say, let's roll the dice. Let's roll the dice and let's, let's get after it. Let's send him. He's one of our best athletes anyways. Uh, and we're able to hit home. There he is, right? That tackle is never accounting for him. And we're able to hit home. Um, misses the tackle, but we're there with our defensive end. Uh, to make the play. So uh, top call for us, huge, huge, huge uh, advantage. Here we are in our quarters concept. Uh, we call this Gator. We're press bail. Um, this is against Parkland. We felt that we needed to neutralize this team's speed, fastest team uh, in the district for sure. Uh, this is Parkland High School. So we felt that if we could get hands uh, off the get-go, you know, as soon as the snap, uh, we felt that 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 we would that they would they'd be playing to our 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 style of game. They, you know, they're they're a little bit more speed, tempo, finesse. We're a little bit more you know in your face, uh, physical kind of uh, kind of football team. And we needed to be you know play up. Here we we're playing quarters um, for us press build quarters. So we're we're working. I'd like for our uh, our night in this situation. This was like game one for him uh, as as a knight to work out to that number two a little bit more. He doesn't, instead he gets his eyes on this number three and it puts our safety in a bind because this receiver here is gonna end up working the middle of the field, right? So <clears throat> that, that number two gets a clean release. Uh, our Sam works to number three, and, but, but because of, of the pressure that we had up front, we're able to force uh, just an incomplete pass. We're able to get him out of the pocket. Uh, pocket. We, we flush him out of the pocket. Uh, our, our will is there, you know, just in case. Uh, he, he comes up and he forces that bad throw. Um, and we're able to, to force a punt here. And that was important for us. It, important for a, a team like this who, who's, who gets on the board quick, who scores quick, their tempo, they move, they move, they move. If we could slow them down and if we could force them into mistakes, we knew that we could play uh, – all four quarters and, and be in the game. And we were, we were in the game right up until that last moment, that last, you know, five minutes of, 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 of the fourth quarter, you know, where, when we just, we, we got tired out. We, you know, we, we played into their hands towards the end 
with that tempo. And, and those are just some of the things that we had to live with, you know. But again, our Sam Backer working in that number three gets good hands. That's what we want to do. We force that quarterback out of the pocket, force him into a bad throw, get that punt. Now our offense gets a shot. So here we are again, press bail quarters. Well, we actually call it Florida. Uh, that's that's our, 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 our press call. Um, trying to keep everything in the family. And what we want to do here, we're going to send outside pressure with our Sam backer. We're going to send him C-gap. Uh, our DN cuts B-gap. So he plays into that pool. We get power here. And because our, the way we teach our, our safeties in cover three and one high to be flat foot, and trigger, you know, if they, if they have run read, we teach the same concept in quarters. So like I said, it's about pedagogy. It's about how we teach it. We're able to get two extra hats in the fit. You know, if, if, if that running back is able to, to break it, break some tackles, you know, we st we're still sound in our fits. Uh, and, and there you see our two safeties working down. Uh, now we have essentially, you know, we still have eight in the box um, <clears throat> to handle run. Here we are from the tight, trying to present different looks. We knew that we had, against this team, we had to change up our cover two. We had to get into quarters. We went into quarter, quarter halves against this team. And it was important for us to show all that, to keep that quarterback uh, off balance. Um, there we are. We're, we're, we're smothering that run because of the pressure we're bringing up front. We're ruining his reads. Uh, he's trying to go quick on us but we're, we're messing with his reads because of what we're playing on the back and he doesn't know if we're in two or if we're in four now this is one of our favorite little change-ups especially in quarters right in our in our three three we call this bama bama means bigs to the boundary all right so we've taken our d end and instead of a five uh, a five shade he's head up on the nose our nose is now a three tech uh to the guard up top and we're still playing a five and what we teach our Sam backer, because we have an adjustment uh, when, we, when we see tight end, is we tell him to play tight end rules, which he's going to jam and he's going to work out. If he sees nothing, he's going to work out to the curl flat. And our D end is going to work back to this B gap. So we're going to end up in, in, in a, a poor man's under front, uh, essentially. All right. Um, we call this Bama. Uh, we're in quarters here, three over two. Uh, to the boundary, excuse me, uh, we're two for two to the boundary. Uh, we're uh, three for three to the field, you know, but we're working uh, with our sandbacker. He's looking to get underneath, uh, to get underneath anything coming inside. You know, we're able to, to send our will. He's going to get free release because of, of how we have, we've aligned uh, our, our, our D lineman. He's able to get a free release through the B gap and force the pressure here. There's no back uh, to pick it up. We force him to, to get out of the pocket, and he's going to throw. He's going to heave something up. Uh, but because we're in quarters, you know, we're, we're able to stay on those routes, and we make a big play to break it up. Here's what, what that front looks like uh, from a tight view, right? So overloaded the boundary, right? That's our end. That's our nose. That's our end. Our sandbacker, excuse me, is playing outside. He's playing curl flat out also. Uh, <clears throat> our, our will backer, he, he has a two-way go. Uh, he's going to go B gap, or, or if he cuts across, he's going to go A gap. Depending on, on what he sees, he's going to read the open gap. Um, once he sees it, he triggers, especially because there's no running back. He doesn't have to worry about it. So he sees that, that our, end, our, our, our nose goes inside, right? He takes that B gap pressure, and now we're able to flush that quarterback out of the pocket and, and, and throw something deep uh, into to our safeties. Right, but that's a little change up that we like. Um, a little change up that we like here and then just to keep you know, we're changing up our front from the back end. What are we in? Are we in cover two? We run this out of cover two, uh, we run this out of, out of cover three also, and, and we still feel like we're, we're, we're sound in our pass fits as well. And here's our, our, our cover six uh, look we're playing quarters to the field and, and cover two to the boundary. We widened out uh, our, our backer a little bit to to give that illusion that we're cover four. There we are, we're playing a hard two to the boundary with our press corner. Uh, we see run, we're able to come down on it and we're able to eat it up. It's like a little quarterback draw, uh, able to just, you know, just read and react a lot quicker 
we're fine on the back end. We have no, we feel like there's no issues there. So we're able to, to trigger right, right now with our linebackers, with our safeties. He reads it, get ready to come down, you know, try, trying to not hop a little bit more, trying to be a little bit more flat foot. Same thing for this safety. But we felt uh, or we feel that just this change up again also provides uh, uh, provides just or causes problems for for all these other guys that that we that we face. Um, we want to make sure that that we're you know changing up as well. We're we're trying to stick to the game plan, but if we can change it up and if we can manipulate the looks that you're going to get, we feel that we're the offense now, and now we're the ones attacking you, and that to us is huge. And there's it from the tight view. You know, we see that quarterback draw. Our, our, our linebackers are, 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 are playing in their, their six-inch steps, and, and they're there in case he leaks out, and we're there to make the play. Uh, first and 10, it goes to second and 10, and now you know, we've, di we've dictated to the offense, say, this is what we're going to get. You're going to run you're gonna, uh, run a pass on us, and, and that's fine, but we know what to expect now because of down the distance and the situation that we presented. Coach Rangel, man, that was so, so detailed. I mean, the amount that you're teaching, the first thing that, so I've got this whole slew of questions right here, but the first thing that I had to ask before anything else, are, are you guys too platooned? No, we're, so we have about 50 to 52 uh, on our roster, on our varsity roster, 50, 52, okay. in the low 50s. Um, we try to be two platoon as much as we can, um, but there's just some guys that, that play both ways and, and we can't. Yeah. So, you know, we try to get reps as much as we can. Um, we try to steal reps, so, you know. Um, it, 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 you know, it, it's one of those, uh, it's iffy. We were two platoon at, at Del Valle for sure, two platoon at Del Valle, but for, for us here, We've got, hey, you're, you're a starter on offense, you're going to play some defense. You're a starter on defense, you're going to play some offense. You know, And that's, that's how it, it, it was new for me to learn that, to try to get used to that, because I don't have my own dudes. You know, I got some dudes, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a necessary uh, thing that we had to do, and, you know, it worked for us, and, it, and hopefully it still works for us. Hey, can you go ahead and unshare your screen? Yes, sir. There we go. There we go. Yeah, again, and but like you kept saying, like it's about how you teach it, right? We have we we know how we're installing this because when you throw all of it out at once, it just feels like oh my gosh, right? Like if I was required to learn all that right now yeah. in an hour, right? But you're not teaching this to all your kids in an hour. It's this is a growth process, what you grow to, and that's just like a we're getting to look at all of it at once. Some other questions that I had, I guess I'll stick with two, two more. Two more questions. We'll call it a night. One, when you have this many options, do you ever feel like you're guessing as to which one's going to work? Or do you always know, I want to do this call because? We try to go for that second one, you know, for we want to, we want to, we want this call because of this, right? So when we're game planning on, on Saturday mornings, when we're talking about what we're, what we're seeing, those are questions that we ask uh, each other as a staff, you know, what, what are these guys good at? What are these guys, you know, what are they, what are they doing in the pass game? What are they doing in the run game? So like if you're planning out in your pregame, in your plan, what pitches you want to throw on Friday night based on some yes, things you seen. Yes, sir. That so us, it becomes more, you know, all right, let's get reps, you know, with this call on, 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 on Monday. Monday, our base down stuff, right? So what if we like this on base down? What if we like this on second down? You know, they're backed up in the field. What do we like here? You know, like, like our mix call, like, like what I was talking about where our cross dogs look, you know? And you may, not, you may not run everything you do in one game plan, right? So no, Each no. game plan is a different collection of different things that you do. Yes, sir. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we, we, we try to you – know, we're going to stick to what we do, yeah. but these are the change-ups that we want to throw. These, this is something different I want to present, not only because – of the game at hand, but because of the opponents that we're going to see the following weeks, because you know, they're going to get our film too, mm -hmm. get three films. We know that they're going to get this. So maybe I'm doing this because number one, it's good against a gap scheme or a zone scheme, whatever it is, but because we're also going to get these guys looking at us as well. And it's good practice for them also. 
you know? So it's kind of taking and giving. Do I like this? No, I don't like this yet, but I like this call against this specific team. Okay. I like that. Well, that, that kind of answered my third question. So I guess that's it, man. I want to thank you so much for joining us um, before we sign off or before I sign us off here, anything, any closing comments? Uh, guys, there's good football in El Paso, Texas. Um, you know, we've, 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 we feel like we've caught up to the rest of the state. We're getting there. Um, you know, I've been, I've been blessed my whole life to, to be able to, to just be successful in, in, in different places um, everywhere that I've gone. Um, I've been blessed with, with a beautiful family. Take advantage of, of the time that we have right now to, to spend with your families, your loved ones, with everything going on. Um, reach out if there's any questions. If you guys want to talk more ball, you guys have my, there's my info at the uh, beginning of the, of the, the slides. Um, always willing to talk ball. Coach Alba, what he's doing for the coaching community is, is fantastic. Shoot him some love on YouTube on Chief Pigskin. Uh, get on those online clinics. There's a Spanish one there that you guys can get. I'm on it. Uh, you know, uh, spread the game. It's a beautiful game, and, and we don't want to take him from us, whether it's a pandemic or, or, or whatnot. You know, we, we want to play football. We want to be out there on the field. It's what we do. It's what we love. It's what we're geared uh, and wired for. Um, you know, spread knowledge, man. The time that, that it takes to put one of these on is, 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 is a lot, and, and, and share some love. Share some love. I appreciate you, Coach. And all you guys, thanks for watching tonight. Hey, if you could like uh, this video, we'd appreciate it. Those things really help. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. We'll catch you here on the, the very next home clinic, which should be next Tuesday here on this channel. So we'll see you then.